Thanks very much, George, and good morning, everybody. Um, as, as George said, I work at UNE um, in the Drought Hub, and one of the tools that we offer to industry right across Australia as part of the Drought Hub is Ag360, and it's a tool that's been developed at UNE, and it really does provide you with an opportunity to have a more proactive way of managing this variable climate that we're all experiencing at the moment and be able to plan forward and project forward and, and be more in control of what's going to happen on the farm. So um, everyone's got seared in their brain images like this of the variability that we've experienced in recent years and how quickly we're flipping from the wet to the dry. Um, does everybody feel like it's speeding up? Yep, and harder and harder to manage. I certainly feel that way on our own property. And all those photos except the one down here were taken on our own our own farm, so um, I feel the pain. I know exactly what it's like. Um, and unfortunately, the variability and the changes in the climate are going to continue. And what I'm going to show you now is some data that's been developed by the Bureau of Meteorology for the Future Drought Fund. Now, this is a platform that you can look up yourself called My Climate View, and you put in your location, and we'll, we'll give you predictions around what you can expect in the future in terms of climate change. So um, what I'm showing you here is for our, our Tamworth location. And the graph at the top is the changes in rainfall. Firstly, uh, average rainfall between 1963 and 1992 um, in the order of about 705 millimetres. And you can see it declining over time. And the third, the, third, the third bar chart is the projections between 2016 and 2045. Um, it's not a massive percentage change in rainfall for Tamworth, certainly much less than other regions I've looked at, about 4% decline. But when you couple that with the changes in temperature that you can see there, we've got a lot less water for plant growth. And that's something we've really got to plan for going forward. So maximum temperature is likely to increase by about 9% over the, by about 2050. And minimum temperature is going to increase by about 13%. So they're pretty big changes coupled with a a small decline in the projected rainfall. And the two at the bottom scare me a lot. Um, a big increase in days above 35 degrees Celsius and also a big decline in the number of frost days. Now, if you live in Armidale, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, it does tell us how much change we need to be planning for and, and have the tools to help us to plan and be prepared and, and learn how to run our business to deal with this level of variability and change. Okay, well, this, um, this is the Bureau's project, projections using their models for Tamworth. I've looked at this data for a lot of locations across the northwest now. Generally, frost days are declining um, and number of days above 35 are going through the roof. Um, but I would encourage you to go to that um, website and have a look for your own t local town um, and see. And Okay, so if we just move on to Ag360, which is a software tool um, that I wanted to talk to you about this morning that um, really is very important in terms of giving you that um, capacity to predict what the weather's going to do in the next six months and but have predictive tools around how much pasture you're going to have in response to that how well your animals will grow and what health risks you might face for those animals in terms of um, extreme temperatures, either heat or cold. So with a proactive management tool like Ag360, you've got much better capacity to maintain your pasture ground cover by setting a minimum residual and planning forward so that you don't um, let your pastures fall below that minimum residual. Um, the ability to protect soils from erosion, obviously, keep that carbon in the soil, which we know is so important now. Um, maintain productive livestock and, as I said, be aware of um, health risks that might be coming up for those animals in terms of heat, cold and also fly strike. So this is a screenshot from Ag360, um, which um, the first thing that you do is locate your property on Google Maps and then start to map the paddocks and describe the pastures. And once you've done that, you can also then describe, add the mobs of animals and describe them in terms of the class of stock, their weight, their condition score and what your targets are for those animals in terms of productivity. Um, the other thing you do is add a rain gauge, um, and that's what that teardrop is up there um, in the Langs Crossing paddock, and that allows us to bring in a weather data set, both historical and forecast, that's customised to the location of your farm. So it's within five kilometres of your farm, um, and you can then access a customised weather outlook for your farm for every day every day for the next six months and it's updated every day. So you've really got a, a really good view of what's coming in the future um, and the most the best uh, forecast that's available anywhere 
in the world in terms of the rainfall outlook, temperatures, wind speeds, solar radiation, etc. And all of that's used in our models. The other thing you can do in AG360 is record all your management information. So you can keep records about the mob numbers, what they're weighing when you weigh them, what their condition scores are. You can keep records of all the veterinary treatments or any sprays that you've applied to your paddocks. Um, records on grazing, how long they've grazed in each paddock, when they've moved, management dates like joining, land marking, calf marking, etc. And all that management information gets combined with the weather information to predict what's going to happen on the property over the next six months. So it's a very integrated system um, and very helpful in terms of having a record if you ever get audited, particularly in terms of veterinary treatments or paddock treatments, that you, you might be asked to demonstrate what records you have for that. As I said, once you've located your farm, we can bring in a weather data set that's customised within five kilometres of the property. Um, and here's the uh, rainfall outlook for this research station right here for the next six months. I just got this off the system um, yesterday. Um, so what we're showing here is cumulative rainfall up on the vertical axis and then dates along the bottom out to the 11th of March next year. And we're, um, what you can see is that um, the Bureau has estimated that there's been 17 millimetres of rain at this location in the last 40 days. And over the next 180 days, there's going to be, th um, the median prediction is for 340 millimetres of rain. The upper prediction is for 409 and the lower one is for 288. So there's always a probability associated with a rainfall outlook and that's why we show you a, a band of potential outcomes. And that uh, forecast will be updated with every next update from the Bureau. So there's nowhere else that you can get an outlook for rainfall for your property for the next six months and certainly not customised to five kilometres, within five kilometres of your property. So it's really unique in terms of the, the rainfall outlook we can provide you. So if you do nothing else, you could just register for Ag360, map one paddock and be able to um, access this rainfall outlook. Even if you didn't want to go further, you could do this as a very simple starting point. The other thing we can do is show you how this year's current rainfall compares to other years in the last 30. So this is a spaghetti diagram. Once again, we've got a cumulative rainfall on the vertical axis and dates on the bottom going through to March next year. So each of those blue lines represents one of the last 30 years in the cumulative rainfall in that year. The black line is the current year, so it's uh, actuals up until today and then forecasted after that. And the red line, we're comparing it to the drought year of 2018-19, but we could compare it to any other year um, just by selecting up the top there and changing the comparative year. I was talking to Sean earlier, and once again, this is for this location right here at the research station. Um, this, is, this current year is not looking too bad because there was some rain in March which, which lifted the graph up, just here. But many of you may have, may have missed that rainfall. If, let me know if you didn't get that rain in March. Yeah, a few people missed out. So without that there, the, the line would be looking more like the red line currently this year. And, and I think Sean will talk more about that later today, about how dry conditions are and what we need to be planning for moving forward. You can look at it for, on a seasonal basis or an annual basis. You can do, it's very flexible depending on what you want to look at. So once we know the rainfall outlook for the farm, we can then go and predict soil moisture based on the parameters you've told us about each paddock in terms of soil type, amount of biomass in that paddock, the grazing history, etc. So we can predict soil moisture from the surface through to 60 centimetres. So I'm showing you um, zero to five centimetres at the top. Um, through to 60 centimetres at the bottom and dates along the bottom again through to March. And you can see how that compares to the um, legend at the bottom. The, um, certainly the top 20 centimetres at the moment is, is in the wilting point to air dry section. Um, there is some moisture at depth and with the rainfall predicted out in uh, February and March, there will be a bit more soil moisture emerging. Um, yeah, so once again, this is updated daily as the rainfall outlook is updated and takes account of the grazing history of the paddock and the biomass in the paddock, etc. But then that soil moisture then flows through to predictions around pasture availability in the paddocks. And this is the graph that I'm showing you now. So this is 
You can do this on a property, whole of property basis or a paddock by paddock basis, but predict how much pasture there'll be in the paddock after the animals have eaten what they need. So you told us when, where those animals are going to graze, how long they're going to be there. We've accounted for that and predicted what pasture will be in the paddock. And we're also um, tracking against a target here. So we've set a minimum residual of 1,500 kilos in the red dot. Sorry. The red dot is a, a target and we're getting messages. Well, you will get messages if you're likely to fall below that residual biomass that you don't want to go below. In this case, the paddock's looking okay to not be overgrazed. And secondly to that is to track the performance of the animals as well in terms of their predicted weight, loss or gain, grazing in the paddocks you've told us they're going to be in. So once again, these animals are on track to be above the target, the red dot, but if they weren't, we'd be getting warnings that the animals are likely to lose weight if you continue with that grazing plan. Uh, finally, I just wanted to highlight to you that we can also provide you warnings around excessive heat excessive cold and fly strike risk. So we can give you long range uh, risk for all of those um, risks to animal health, but we can also, we also give a five day specific outlook for the next five days coming. And you can see this is an old uh, winter based um, slide shot now, but you can see on the 26th of May, there was a warning around cold risk for lambing ewes. Okay, so we predict the risk of mortality in newborn lambs from cold, mortality in newly shorn sheep, um, and excessive heat um, stress in, in sheep and cattle. And uh, we also we take into account animal weight and their growth trajectory in providing that risk. So it's more customised than the general weather alerts that you'll receive on the radio from the Bureau. So uh, that's really just a quick overview of what the functionality is within AG360. Um, you can really set it up to describe your own farming system, what you're planning to do in terms of grazing, and then use it to plan ahead in terms of how much feed will I have, how much supplement will I need to provide, do I need to reduce my numbers, have I got enough feed, all those questions that we're all asking ourselves at the moment. You can start to do that in a scenario planning way using Ag360 and be much more prepared for what's coming because you've got that climate um, that weather outlook in front of you for the next six months updated regularly. So you've got the most up-to-date information to help with your planning um, and your feed budgeting going forward. And thank you, thanks to the support of the Future Drought Fund, we can provide this product free across Australia to any of you. Um, it's not hard to set up, but we're certainly available to help you if you need help. And if any of the LLS staff wanted to put groups together, we could certainly help with training, training activities to get people started. I think that might be my last slide, George. Yeah, that's my contact details up there. If anyone's interested, and that's the website address. I've um, just got a quick question on the, the pasture growth prediction you have. Obviously, that's just a, like a generic. You don't, can you segregate it to say native pasture, semi-improved, improved? So the parameters, the, the model um, has been developed by um, the same person who developed the SGS model. And we've tried to keep the parameters that you need to put in as simple as possible. So you tell us about the proportion of temperate and the proportion of tropical, subtropical in, the, in each paddock, and then you rate the productivity of that pasture compared to other pastures in your district. So that's a function of fertility, soil type, species, etc. Um, and the other thing you tell us about is soil fertility. So if you've got a soil test result, you put that in and it will sit, put the slider for soil fertility in the correct position. So those three things are what drives plant growth based on the rainfall. Yeah, it's not hard to set it up. It just sometimes takes a little bit of calibration to get started. Uh, yeah, it, it's a plant-based model. It will grow forage crops or crops the same, the same as pasture. Um, but, and generally they're very high productivity because they're well fertilized. So you have, you've got your scalers right at the upper end. The only thing it won't do is if you're gonna go through to harvest, it won't predict the, the harvestable. Yeah, it's Australia wide. So the malls, um, are what we call biophysical models. So they're, they're built on the, relate, the scientific relationships between all the parameters of growth and, and animal intake, etc. cetera. So they're, um, and because you've located your farm in Google, um, we know if you're in tropical North Queensland or Southern Victoria and the models can cope with that. Is there a chance, you know, you're doing about the predictions where, is it something on the cards for carbon sequestration? 
Um, we, we've talked about that a lot um, and it's something we could do, uh, but it would need investment to do that, to put that model on the platform. I might just add, sorry, we are um, going to very soon release a phone app that will support the website. So that will allow you to record all your farm management information as you're in the paddock, which will make it a lot quicker and easier and more accurate. Um, and one of the other things about the phone app is, as, a, as I said, as a minimum, you could just drop a Google pin on your farm location and get the rainfall outlook. Even if you don't want to do all the other recording, you could at least get the rainfall outlook.